before I begin with my speech, I would like to thank Brosmet for including me into this event. I have been using the Artemis Balloon since I have been doing CTOs. Uh, that means I have uh, eight years of experience with this balloon. Uh, for the last three years, I used to be one of the first, one of the five operators with the most cases in the Euro CTO club. This uh, is this year's ranking so far, but the year is not over yet. I think I should be one of those who get the credit for having Artemis on the Euro CTO registry form, as Artemis is the only balloon I use in CTOs. Why Artemis in CTO? I will mention it later during my talk. When we talk about complex coronary intervention, we mean left main bifurcation, CTO, calcified coronary artery intervention, instant restenosis. But for me, it is only CTO as it comprises all of them. This is a, a 52 years old male patient with stable angina pectoris who refused surgery. And he had angina at 300 meters. Uh, severe dis distal left main disease is evident, as you can see. This was somehow a thrombotic lesion. So we uh, prepared the lesion with an Artemis 3 by 15 millimeter semi compliant balloon. And then here comes the stand implantation. And proximal optimization technique with 4.5 by 8 millimeter Apollo non compliant balloon. And here is the end result on the right panel. Five years has passed over now since the procedure, and I have talked to the patient last week, and he said that he is symptom-free. If you have a good balloon with appropriate post-dilation, you have a good result also, not in the short term, also in the, in the, in the long term. The trackability is excellent, and after the first usage, you may need to use it again and again. In these circumstances, it does not lose its performance. The wrapping, as Jaja uh, mentioned in his previous uh, presentation, is, 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 is good. So after the first dilation, you can deliver it again easily with proper suction uh, of the indef later. So uh, I am a radial operator. I do all my complex cases procedures via the radial approach. CTO and left main procedures, definitely seven French, but bifurcation procedures, mostly six French. When you work with six French, you need high quality balloons. So Artemis and Apollo are compatible with six French if kissing balloon is needed. Uh, this is a bifurcation lesion. Uh, this was a culotte procedure. We, uh, where is the, I have to, I have to show you the lesion first. This is, yeah, this is, uh, okay. You have seen the, 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 the previous slides, the lesion there. So uh, two by 20 millimeter Artemis balloon, first OM, then CX ballooning. We have a big dissection. Uh, so first we solve the dissection with the stand towards the OM branch. We did a pot with three by 18 millimeter Apollo, and then we wired the OM again, and the CX, and the same balloon that we used previously could cross the stented area towards the CX, as you can see on the right panel here. So uh, the, 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 the thanks to the low profile features of the Artemis, uh, we, we, we could cross that stented area. Stanting towards the CX, and then you can see the wire exchange again to the, to, the, to the OM. One can see how beautifully two Apollo 2.5 by 15 millimeter balloons were positioned easily through a six French guiding catheter. Put again, and on the right panel, you can see the end result of this culotte procedure. Here, this is a bifurcation lesion with a reverse angle of the diagonal. The takeoff is retroflex and more than 120 degree. Sasuke double lumen in place, filter FC, and the hairpin maneuver in action here in this lesion. It took us 30 minutes to cross this diagonal. Once we crossed it, we with a wire, here comes the two by 20 millimeter Artemis balloon. Lesion predilation, 
the stent was uh, crossable only with the anchor balloon in the LAD. Uh, two by 10 millimeter Artemis was placed in front of the diagonal stent. This was the DT crush procedure stent, which was crushed with this balloon after stent deployment. Dividing the diagonal again, 2.2 by 20 millimeter balloon couldn't cross even with an anchor balloon, as you can see on the right panel. If you are doing complex cases, you should also be prepared for using CTO balloons. Here comes the 1.5 by 15 millimeter Artemis CTO balloon. It crossed with the help of the anchor balloon. And uh, here you can see after pedilation and then the first kissing with two Artemis balloons. Stand deployment and then pot with Apollo three by 10 millimeter balloon here, dividing the diagonal again, second kissing balloon. And uh, and, and this was a radial approach, of course, with, with, with six French guiding catheter. And pot with three by 10 millimeter Apollo, and here comes the end result. So in complex cases, you need sometimes CTO balloons in terms of recrossing the struts of the stent before kissing. In that terms, at least for me, Artemis has proved itself to be a good one. Artemis balloon has a special space in my CTO procedures because, because of its features. This is an ambiguous cap, RCA CTO cap. We got through the septal here. This was a turnpike LP and this was a scion wire, I think. And uh, the microcatheter couldn't cross. The turnpike LP is a low micro, uh, low profile microcatheter, but it, can, it couldn't cross. So we used a 1.5 20 millimeter Artemis balloon and we ballooned all the resistant parts of the septals. The microcatheter follows the wire after septal predilation. Retrograde wire in the guiding catheter on the left panel. I'm just waiting for the video to move. Yeah, yeah, now it's coming and the turnpike LP in the RC, and now the, guy, the, the, the wire comes and goes into the guiding catheter easily. Micro in the, in the guiding catheter, here comes the RG3. After ballooning and stenting, one can see the, the final resi result on the right panel. By being able to predilate the septal with, the, with this Artemis balloon, it saved me a micro catheter, which otherwise I had to change to another one, to a Caravalo, to a fine cross, or a more, more uh, a braided one rather than a talkable one. So, uh, so it it saved me money. It saved me money, and then it's important. So, here comes an, rather another CTO, and this is an RCA CTO, ambiguous cap. Inter, we have interventional collaterals. Thanks, uh, it, it, it's a lack to have interventional collaterals. And this was a case with a previous failure. The, the JCTO score is three. In CTOs, if you want to succeed with less hassle, you should begin with a proper setup. A side branch anchoring balloon, a side branch anchoring balloon is mostly anchoring. Is mostly is, is mostly crucial for strength, strong backup, which facilitates both fire passage and for device advancement. So uh, the balloon quality is of high importance in crossing the tiny, most tortuous side branch for a functioning anchor. The 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 the, the left the, the left EL sits safe in the coronary thanks to the Artemis two by 15 millimeter side branch anchor. Here one can see the tip injection. I want to, yeah, here one can see the, the tip injection and uh, of septals to verify that we are in the right track. C on Y crosses the septal. Here you can see. And after some surfing maneuvers, we are true with this Scion wire here. I'm just waiting to cross the, the, the septal here. And then I will go further. And here, the, the, the scion wire anchoring to the PL branch of the distal RCA, contrast injection, 
and from the micro give us an understanding of the distal cap anatomy. Here it will come. This is the distal uh, tip injection to understand the anatomy. And we applied the contemporary uh, uh, reverse cut with a 2.5 millimeter Artemis balloon. Uh, first, we wanted to touch the balloon with the wire, but luckily it went into the anti-grade guiding catheter, as you can see here on both panels. Here, we trapped the wire and the shaft of the anchoring balloon, the micro went into the guiding catheter. As a general rule, one should not trap the anchoring balloon, as you can compress the lumen and hinder the deflation of the balloon. This kind of scenery has never happened to me with the Artemis balloon. Of course, it doesn't mean it will not. So the Pilot 200 was exchanged with uh, R350 uh, after ballooning. The empty micro uh, was trapped to prevent a comeback into the RCA, as you can see here in the left panel and Artemis two by 30 millimeter balloon for predilation. Once you cross with a micro, you don't need a CTO balloon anymore. 30 millimeter length balloon covers the whole lesion, prevents further dissection, shortens the ballooning procedure and radiation time. 30 millimeter length Artemis balloons are my first choice once I crossed with a microcatheter. So here comes the further ballooning, checking for any collateral damage here on the, on the, on the right panel, stanting, and here comes the end result. And here comes it again from a different view. In my routine practice, in my routine proctoring practice, I always ask for a two by 30 millimeter long balloons from Artemis. As I am in a foreign cat lab, and there are already some adjustments I, I have to make, which means uh, time loss and more radiation exp exposure and a little bit more frustration. This is, uh, the, the, therefore I need long balloons, definitely long balloons in CTO procedures. This is an RCA CTO with an ambiguous cap. We intended to use the epicardial collateral here. Uh, on the on the on the on the left panel, and Corsair pre excess and serum wire cross the epicardial collateral. In this case, the retrograde anatomy is totally ambiguous because of the previous cabbage uh, operation. We are in nowhere land with the micro here, and we didn't integrate this section re-entry integrately and draw the guide banner as far as we can in the distal part of the RCA. First, we tried a just marker approach, but we had to change immediately to a reverse cut procedure, guide banner assisted to reverse cut procedure. And here you can see the gradius on the left panel uh, going nicely into the guide liner. Retro microcatheter and RG3 is in the, uh, is in the guiding catheter, in the guideliner, you see. Wire externalization with this long two by 30 millimeter Artemis balloon. And here comes the, the, the ballooning on the, on, the, on the left panel. Further ballooning and after stanting, we, we are doing further ballooning and after stanting, we lost the PI branch here as one can expect. So uh, we regained the PL with the help of a fine dual, dual, dual lumen microcatheter, kissing balloon with two long Artemis, two by 30 millimeter balloon. And here is the end result. So uh, in summary, I'm going to summarize what I have talked. Non-compliant Apollo balloon is very effective uh, in left main and bifurcation lesions as it is low profile, efficient, reuse, reusable, fits in the six French guiding catheter when kissing is needed. And the Artemis balloon is fascinating in CTO procedures with its different features. You can easily predilate a septal or predilate 
a micro uncrossable C2 with the 1.0 balloon. The 30 millimeter long feature gives you gain in time, contrast, and radiation exposure after crossing this CTO with a micro catheter. And that's all I am, I, I am going to say. And thank you all for your attention. Thanks, Dr. Shifkat. Uh, wow, there's real some very, very nice cases um, uh, in, in, in the use of Artemis, long Artemis balloons. Unfortunately, you know, I don't have any semi-compliance that are more than 20 mm. That would be really nice, uh, to be honest with you, to have some long uh, semi-compliant balloons. Um, okay, there, there are a few questions. Uh, I think uh, um, maybe I'll just throw these questions to you, Dr. Shefket. Uh, what are, what's the percentage for bifurcation lesion in complex PCI? Uh, what's the percentage of... Maybe, maybe, maybe you can answer from your experience. What's the percentage of bifurcation techniques you use in your complex PCIs? Uh, that's not the question. I, sh I should be one answering one because uh, I am not doing a regular on geography. I am just doing complex cases. Uh, I, am, I am doing CTOs, left vein. And if you, uh, in my experience, uh, about... 20 to 25 persons in CTO, I have to deal with the bifurcation after the CTO procedure. It can be a, a, a bifurcation, bifurcation lesion before the CTO. Uh, also, in, in, uh, it can be within the lesion. It can be also in a distal bifurcation manner. But the percentage is about 25 to 30 patient, uh, percent in C2 patients. And in left main, in left main patients, uh, you know, uh, if you have a left main, if you have an osteo left main, the, the percentage is very low. And if you have a distal left main, uh, you have to do always uh, uh, bifurcation uh, procedures. So I can just answer it for C2 procedures, 25 to 30%. I mean, I think that that's that not very far from my experience as well. Uh, um, the, another question for pot technique, do you think uh, NC balloon is better or a semi-compliant? I mean, uh, a pot is basically, you know, uh, post-dilatation. Uh, so I think uh, most of us here will go with an uncompliant balloon rather than a semi-compliant balloon. Uh, yeah. Do you, do you disagree? Yeah. So, you know, if it's a post altation, definitely we'll go with an alcohol. Yeah. So we want to have a good expansion of the stent to re-enter the side branch. So uh, we, have, we have to be sure that we have a proper expansion and a good niche to enter the side branch. So for that reason, non-compliant balloons are are almost essential in these circumstances i think it's my opinion absolutely agree absolutely